So now let's talk about this premise and these rules and what that actually all means. The first method I'd like to show you is the idea of edge rewriting. The main idea is that we have something to start with. That's our premise. That's, that's the geometry at the very beginning of our L system that we have to work off of. And the idea is that we're going to make some sort of rule which is going to rewrite whatever we have in the premise. So in this case, whenever we start with a premise, this is what exists in our scene. If I'm to, let's say, draw over this for a second, we have a point right here which represents the movement of F, right? So whatever rule gets applied, it's going to apply to whatever is there. Okay, so what we could say with this is maybe something like this. Let's try to replace F with F, and we're going to turn right, and then let's go forward to. So let's go like that. So what's happened here is that we're at generation one. And actually, before we get to generation one, let's start with zero. So at zero, we only have this premise. Once we go to one, we've now applied the rule one time to whatever we had there. So in this case, this is what we have for the premise. The rule gets applied. And in our rule, we now say that this F has turned into F plus plus F F. Okay. So this is what we'll have in generation one. Let's say that I go to generation two. Now we end up with something like this. So here's what happens with that. Let's go back to one right here. And I'm going to draw over this again. So we had F, which is right around here. And again, we applied uh, two rotations going right, and then we went F, F. What's going to happen on the next generation is the rule is going to be applied again. So when our rule says F is equal to F plus plus F, F. It's going to do that for every single instance of F which already exists in our scene. So it's going to do the same thing here. It's going to say F plus plus F, F and et cetera for this. An easy way to understand this term edge rewriting is that we have an edge, right? And all we're doing is rewriting whatever is in this edge. And so in this case, we have rule one, which again, as an example, let's say F plus F and whatever is currently in our scene just gets rewritten according to the rules. So we have this kind of thing, right? And then with the second generation, this would be generation zero, generation one. The second generation, again, rule one gets applied again. And that is how we procedurally create things. But anyway, as you can see, over so many generations, we eventually end up with some really complicated geometry. And the amount of time it takes to calculate this stuff also increases exponentially. Because now, whenever we have something like this, we have a lot of points going on. And because of that, you know, we have a, uh, a very interesting structure which appears. Now, whatever we see here is really just an interpretation of one giant list of commands that the L system has generated. So if we go here to our windows and we create a new floating panel, let's go ahead and set this to our text ports. We can actually see what this L system is doing by typing in op inputs or op uh, info dash V and then we can just drag in this node right here. Press enter, and there we go. There is our full L system and what it's doing. So at a certain point, this L system becomes huge because really all we're doing with this rule is we're creating a bunch of text. 
We're creating a way of procedurally generating text like this, which then gets interpreted as instructions for drawing out this shape. So that's essentially what's happening. Now, let me show you guys a really practical example of how you might use this to create something. And let's say that I want to create these different spools of rope. Let's pretend that we're making this ship and we need to find a way to make a bunch of different versions of these. Well, to do that in an L system, it's actually very simple. Let's actually change our premise here to F plus F. And then with our rule, I'm going to say F is equal to F plus F and press enter. Now, as I turn up the generations, we're going to eventually create a circle like that. And what we can do in order to start adding a bit of randomness to this is adjust this random scale. This random scale is going to scale the distance that something travels a little bit randomly every single time. And by doing that, it gives us a bunch of different varieties in how far each F travels. So we have something like this. And we really don't need a whole lot of it. Let's just take this maybe by 0 0.02 for right now. And that'll be good. Now, if we go back to our rules, we want to find a way to add a bit of depth to this. Because right now, we are really only existing on a 2D plane. And I want to bring this rope outwards. So one of the commands to, to turn in uh, the Z direction along here is by using the forward slash. So if I do that, and then let's go ahead and set a small angle to start of let's say one degree, we'll end up with something like this. Now, as I adjust these degrees, so I can try 0.5, maybe 0.25, it's really not ideal to adjust it right here every single time. So another thing that you can do with this L system is you can create your own custom variable that'll fit inside of these parentheses. So instead of typing out 0.25 or 0.1 and adjusting it like that, I can go here to the values and use any one of these variables that have been specified here. So we have variable B, we have variable C and D, which are all lowercase letters. So in this case, I'm going to say B. And now as I go, to my value, I can change it with a slider like so. And this is pretty cool because now I'm just gonna go ahead and add some rows to this, let's say eight. Maybe I'll change the thickness so we have a thicker rope. Maybe turn down the generation to let's say seven. And now that I have this slider along here with B, it's a lot easier just to control it along there as opposed to typing it out every single time. So if you find that there's a specific argument that's going to be used a lot, then try taking advantage of one of these variables. And that'll be a, a cool way of controlling that. So there we go. Now we have something that's a bit like a spool. And that we can also change the, uh, the random scale here as well. So we can do maybe something like that. And then change to C to give us different variations. In the next lesson, let's take a look at a more organic tree-like example.